नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा योर वाचिंग पर्सपेक्टिव कंटिन्यूइंग विद आवर सीरीज डीकोडिंग बजट 2022-23 टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टर्न आवर फोकस टू द हेल्थ केयर सेक्टर इन द यूनियन बजट दिस ईयर द हेल्थ सेक्टर हैज बीन एलोकेटेड अ लिटिल ओवर 86000 करोड़ रुपीस अ हाइक ऑफ 16% over nearly 74000 crore rupees back in 2021-22 out of this 83000 crore rupees have been allocated to the department of health and family welfare while 3200 crore rupees have been allocated to the department of health research finance minister nirmala sitaraman also announced a national tele mental health program and also roll out of an open platform for the national digital health ecosystem The National Tele Mental Health Program will include a network of 23 tele mental health care centers of excellence with Nimhans being the nodal center and IIT Bangalore providing technology support. While the National Digital Health Ecosystem will consist of digital registries of health providers and health facilities, unique health identity, consent framework and universal access to health facilities. so leveraging the power of technology how will the ecosystem benefit people and enable a healthier india coming in the midst of the pandemic how significant are these announcements to what extent will they ensure better access to health services also looking at the lessons the pandemic has taught us what more needs to be done to further strengthen our healthcare system these are some of the aspects that we will be discussing on the show today with three distinguished panelists who are joining me on the program so let me first introduce them to you I have with me Ms Preeti Sudan she is former health secretary government of India thank you ma'am for joining me on the program today Mr Bishnu Panigrahi group head medical strategy and operations Fortis Healthcare thank you Mr Panigrahi for joining us on the program and commander Navneet Bali he is regional director north region Narayana Health Gurugram and also co-chairman healthcare council assocham glad to have you on the show sir uh preeti ji let me begin the program today with you in fact with your response to the budget announcements uh for the healthcare sector do you see any big ticket announcements that the finance minister has made considering the fact that we are still amidst the pandemic so uh tina thanks for having me on your show and i feel that this budget is actually about consolidation it's about introducing technology in critical interventions based on lessons learned during the two years of covid and recognizing genomics and pharmaceuticals among sunrise opportunities so these are the three uh, i would say thematic um, um ingredients of this budget as we go through the program i will expand on these so sure. and what do you think are the big ticket uh, announcements apart from the allocation which is uh, I, I, i'll take that question to in fact mr panigrahi whether it's significant or not but what according to you are some of the major announcements which can be uh, a game changer for our indian healthcare system uh, thank you tina for uh, inviting uh, me on behalf of fortis healthcare to grace this occasion number one i'll say that uh, overall this is a growth oriented budget and uh, there's a lot of a lot of emphasis on uh, infrastructure education on the healthcare uh, the expectations was that there'll be more to it especially with the pandemic that hit us and uh, there was a lot of expectation from the man out in the street that uh, healthcare will get a lot of uh, investment in yes. but however uh, it, it probably incrementally this will come through but some of the good uh, things that we need to sort of highlight is that i always look at glass half full is i think so the digital health ecosystem that uh, the government is planning for uh no one realizes that once we have this uh, complete uh, digitalization of all our health records it will help us track uh, disease disease progression and uh, the um, uh, health economics can be properly looked at and for the healthcare planners you can allocate your res- uh, resources accordingly uh, depending on the geography this, uh, so you plan your medical programs your where, where you have to fund uh, put your funds there so it's a very good thing that is being put in place so that's something that uh, people have not realized i think so in over uh, in due course it will happen mm-hmm. uh, on mental health that's a game changer in, in in fact before the pandemic also in india uh, mental health is an issue uh, was an issue however the stigma attached to it so a lot of people were not forthcoming and if you recollect even who ma'am is a former health secretary she is a, she is very much aware of it 
is that WHO also has put up this that uh, mental health needs to be sort of taken uh, the, as a it should not be put at the back burner. It should be in the front front of the healthcare uh, uh, healthcare uh, setup. So this is something that the government of India has done very well. So this is something which we must uh, commend the government. And the other thing which I like to say is, is that on the health research, there, there was hardly any emphasis on this. So I think so this is a good way to start it. So I'll put it as the, the if I say that glass half full, these are the things that I'd like to highlight. There are certain misses. When you come to that, I will speak on it. Absolutely. So the glass half full has been explained. What are the misses? I'll come back to you and understand as far as mental health announcement is concerned, as far as the digital ecosystem is also concerned. But uh, let me get in a perspective from Commander Bali at this moment. Uh, Commander, what do you think? What according to you are the positives? Especially because we see that this time there's been a push to technology. So this technology-based approach to the healthcare se sector, how is it going to enable the entire healthcare ecosystem? Thank you so much, uh, Tina, for having me today on the show. Um, as has been spoken by my eminent panelists before, uh, I think uh, one word that I've been using um, frequently now is <clears throat> a concept of democratization of healthcare. Uh, that means that economic strata of a citizen does not determine what uh, healthcare facility he or she is able to access. And how do you democratize healthcare in a country like ours with a huge you know, population and with hugely remote areas which are inaccessible? And that is by using digital technology. So one very, very important direction which the budget points, as we are all aware that budget primarily is a, you know, a statement of income expenditure of a government. And it's quite likely that you may have some policy statements or policy statements made. You might also have some of them not being made. But at least the intent and direction that if you need to democratize healthcare in the country, which by which means that economic status of a citizen that does not determine the healthcare facility he or she gets, and also healthcare is accessible to far and remote areas of a country. Because you know, if you just are going to focus on metro cities, tire tire one cities, tire two cities, then it's of no use. You know, what about our remote areas? So the budget because of its push towards digital healthcare, whether it is as was spoken about mental health care about looking at you know your emr development of digital uh, signatures etc i think it really really points towards a larger picture when the push is going to be towards uh, what we call democratization of healthcare certainly very important point uh, preeti ji raised by commander bali democratization of the healthcare system and towards this it's, it's important that every segment of the society has access to, has not just access to healthcare, but quality services as well. And that's very important. So how can the national health digital ecosystem enhance that access and quality also for, uh, for the common man, for the general citizens who have high hopes, especially coming after two devastating waves of the pandemic, there were hopes which have not been met, but nevertheless, announcements, these are critical, these are important that have been made. So how can we be game changers in future? Preeti ji. So, Hatina, as I was saying uh, right in the beginning, that this budget is A, about consolidation. When I said consolidation, if you remember, last budget had announced Pradhan Mantri Ayushman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission with 64,180 crore allocation over the last over the next five years so this is what uh, we should remember and very important point i think commander bali has raised that access for all and as you said quality for all so in the this mission increased investment in public health which means primary health care the urban slum areas the yushman bharat uh, health and wellness centers you know, uh, district, every district hospital to have uh, laboratories. The, uh, the NCDC, uh, that is a national disease control centers, they have been um, expanded and, uh, you know, uh, upgraded. Then NIV labs of, for uh, research and for uh, diagnostics, uh, they are going to be now regional pan-India. So, the ingredients of this budget has to be seen in the light of the Pradhan Mantri Ayushman Bharat Digital Infrastructure Mission. So from creating actual uh, facilities to now moving towards 
digital um, FSS of an ecosystem. Mind you, they did not say digital system. They said digital ecosystem. And the digital health blueprint also envisaged an ecosystem. So within that ecosystem, both the actual physical care and care reaching, you know, the remotest areas reaching the unreached through technology. That is the vision of this budget. And mental health care, I'm so, uh, I would say, uh, glad that at last it has found its place in policy. Absolutely. Because it, it was such a stigma, nobody would acknowledge in India, we, were very, we, are, we wouldn't uh, say that there are mental health issues here because we say the family will take care and all that. But for once, uh, I think it is COVID, it's the isolation that we all are facing, it's a lack of physical uh, interaction. It has been recognized now that it's across ages. The children are not able to go to school, so they are not playing outside, they are not interacting. Uh, there are learning um, uh, gaps. So each and the, the elderly. So it's it's for everybody that these mental health issues are so important and it's recognition in the budget, I think is, is a great move forward for India. And of course, I would say that, uh, you know, both the access and quality now is to be ensured. It's upon all of us. It's not just the budget announcement. It's upon, it's an implementation. It's the state's, and the center together. And I would say as, uh, you know, uh, public, we also need to have our responsibilities to Absolutely. see that- and Since you spoke you about know, implementation, that let me take the question to- properly. Let, let me take the question on implementation to Commander Bali, because as soon as the announcements were made, and over the past week, there have been a lot of concerns raised uh, that although it is a laudable effort, we never spoke about mental health. And now this is one thing which has been announced by the finance minister inside parliament. So, of course, a laudable first step. But going forth, the concern has been that concentrating capacity on just a few hands could affect the quantity and quality going forth. Commander Bali, do you agree? Do you think that's a valid concern? And if it is going forth, how can that be addressed? See, uh, this... Um you know, oft repeated, uh, you know, concept of uh, physical beds being a measure of a healthcare, uh, you know, um, uh, this one is a very, very outdated concept now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'll explain it to you and <clears throat> it will actually prove that <clears throat> just having a few centers does not mean that everything is focused around these few centers. Uh, when we talk about this in conjunction with the digital ecosystem, it means that you don't actually measure the capacity of your health system by physical beds. You can have tele uh, consults, you can have digital remote access platforms which give you reports across. So people actually don't have to go to a few centers to access whatever they need to do. And this budget sorts of, again, you know, sets that context correctly, that two things. One, that although there are some very specified centers mentioned right now, but right now, it's a first step towards, you know, what they think, uh, specifically when you mentioned mental and uh, health, but it also encompasses and combines it together with the digital health, which means that you don't have to actually be going to a place to, you know, do your consultations, et cetera, et cetera. So it is not limited to a few centers. Mm -hmm. It means that you are remotely able to access whatever you need across many centers, across wherever you're sitting in the country. So uh, it sort of uh, enlarges the complete vision by as of now allocating some centers as nodal centers or those centers of excellence, but it also pushes the envelope to a huge amount where you don't measure, as you said, you know, the uh, 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 by exact bed quantity. You, okay. you are actually completely opening up the whole thing by using your digital platform. Okay, okay. Mr. Panigrahi, a related question on implementation. So what we are talking about and the thrust uh, this time in the budget has been to have a digital experience. The thrust on technology is quite evident. But this digital experience can prove to be a game changer only if all stakeholders concerned, the facilities, the doctors, the patients, all of them work in tandem. And this is going to be precisely a very, very big challenge. Yes, if you look at it, uh, we have leapfrogged as far as our IT is concerned. And uh, we, uh, from uh, 2G to 3G, now 4G, now we are, we are talking about 5G down the line. And there is a, 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 a work going on. How do we sort of uh, get uh, internet facilities right up to our villages and small towns? So that is where the reach will come. 
and uh, this uh, with, without uh, the proper uh, it bandwidth you will not really be able to uh, man, sort of uh, man, uh, cash in on this uh, digital framework that we are talking about so that is one part of it and uh, as commander bali rightly mentioned it brings uh, into play the common man in the uh, right in uh, what i call bharat in the small towns and villages who can access healthcare any anywhere they want like for example mental we talk about mental health now with uh, nimans bank bangalore being the center the nodal center so from across the country anyone can sort of uh, take consult there and they don't have to travel to uh, bangalore and uh, there will be multiple satellite centers uh, who will also be there so they can um, uh, go there so this will be a huge game changer i'm giving a small example we have a uh, mental health program running in our uh, set, uh, setup across the country now earlier i'm giving example patients from say jharkhand they have to if they have to come to a major metro they take a train they come with the family they have to stay here so imagine the expenses but with the digital platform they don't have to come there from there they they access the doctor they consult the medications are given online uh, uh, and uh, whatever little fees is given it is it is minuscule to the amount of money they would have spent by coming all the way from jharkhand to delhi or mumbai or, or to bangalore in any way so so digital health mission is something that will help out and i'm confident that health, uh, we we can uh, implement it if we could uh, do the universal uh, uh, the aadhar that has come up more than 1 billion people uh, uh, people have got their uh, aadhar cards done so we have actually our uh, te- uh, technology uh, we are now leaf frog to that stage so i'm confident that we can do it so the intent is there so let's speak let's look at it from the positive side a, a positive mindset will give us a positive outcome okay okay pvg coming to the misses now we have spoken about positives and about the new measures that have been announced but uh, the last two budgets the middle class had very high hopes and especially after the experience of the second wave of the pandemic so uh, uh, somewhere the middle class feels that they are being left out is there anything i mean uh, which we can expect even beyond budget on the policy front to address concerns of the miss- missing middle class there is uh, you, you know there were high hopes which have not been addressed but out of the budget can there be expectations which can be fulfilled in the times to come so uh, now uh, tina you have to look it like this now the ayush pmj ayushman bharat pmj it covers 40% of the most needy uh, through insurance then you see the upper class who can afford healthcare is 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 another angle when we are talking about middle class we are top- talking about two things first is opd expenditure out of pocket expenditure is mostly actually on opd on our daily medicines on uh, regular consultations for small diseases then there is this catastrophic expenditure which is then on say you know you fall ill you have a hospitalization for a long time you had long covid also and a lot of uh, bills rising in the, if you are in the private sector Uh, in a private hospital they also can't help it i mean to some extent now given this scenario where does the middle class stand so i feel that what can be done more is that you must have medical insurance reforms because uh, you see that is something that can take care of the concerns of the middle class number one that is maybe what is the what is missing next is that we have already actually now consolidating our primary health care base once the primary health care base is consolidated through health and wellness centers through expansion of telemedicine uh, i think the it will be all classes it will be rich poor it will be uh, middle class they will all actually benefit through technology and through the innovations that the government has now uh, put in for health care mm-hmm. commander bali what what according to you have been the misses one of course has been the very very marginal increase in allocation and there have been concerns from different sectors coming forth that the increase should have been more because the marginal increase leaves very little scope for scaling up the ongoing interventions or for future announcements as such but uh, apart from uh, the increase in allocations what according to you ha- have been some of the expectations which have not been met yeah i see this uh, allocation uh, i have run the navy's budget for 2 years when i was in the indian navy so this 
allocation and then the expenditure which you know finally you end up incurring are two very different things so you know we don't have to actually much bother about uh, you know this at all so let us keep that to one side but you know there were two one or two more expectations which actually maybe budget was not the right place to address it and that is about incentivizing the private sector to set up hospitals in you know remote areas you know maybe uh, allocation of a you know a, a fund or something like that or maybe you know pushing uh, the private sector to go on because until unless you incentivize private sector with the way of land you know building it or having very very effective ppp models i mean pushing the private sector to do so is is a question mark and the second thing of course you've already spoken about the missing middle maybe um, you know we have seen that this incentivizing uh, you know and uh, smoking resulted in you know maybe incidences of you know uh, some of the uh, uh, cancers uh, i mean the data is still uh, yet to come but it's quite possible that when you disincentivize smoking you end up in you know something happening better in the healthcare maybe uh, many of these uh, diseases like diabetes especially in india is becoming a diabetic diabetic capital it is a diabetic capital of the world hypertension and these kind of things some incentives and some disincentives which push people towards a little bit better you know preventive health toward this could have been seen but you know i think the finance minister is the right person to judge you know where the allocation of resources has to be made and now uh, because we are just coming out of the pandemic the situation as far as the revenue side is i mean the you know the uh, tax accruals and other things are concerned is just stabilizing so i'm sure you know it's a very very tight rope uh, walk for the finance minister okay uh, mr panikrahi one last comment from you because it's also said a lot of representatives also say that not everything can be announced in the budget there is hope that out of budget also there can be several announcements so on the healthcare front some urgent expectations which were not fulfilled but going forth you expect because of the kind of reforms that the industry requires at the moment lessons learned from the two devastating waves that we have seen we are still amidst the ongoing third wave the pandemic is yet to uh, stay there is always this threat of future variants which may emerge so looking at all these aspects some of the urgent expectations which you expect the government to come up with in the next few months or so i'd like to start off first with strengthening our primary and secondary healthcare facilities that's the most important thing even way back in 1946 the board committee put a lot of that is a very nice document i will be aware of it is right from the primary health center to secondary health center to district hospitals what needs to be done there was a lot of emphasis on public health which has we which we have ignored and to our uh, peril so that's the second part ma'am has already told about the insurance i think so the middle class is something that they are looking at how do we uh, universalize the insurance part so that is a huge thing because out of pocket payment is is the burden that is killing people's uh, incomes and the families so th that is, the other part which i like to say is that we need to look at the non communicable diseases going forward yes. so that is uh, something that uh, is a tsunami waiting for us if you look at at the time of independence nearly 60 65% of our deaths were from communicable diseases but now upwards of 60% is from non communicable diseases so there's a lot of emphasis that has to be put on primary and secondary health care and preventive health care public health is a very important part and the last part before i end is i would like to stress that health and education are two fundamental things that society looks at for looking at how do you increase uh, and elevate the value chain in uh, in the society and health care should not be looked at only for uh, delivering health care it is a huge employment generator which is not never uh, talked about it is and if you look at go into work any hospital public private nearly 50% of the people employed are female when we have more female employment uh, females employed the society develops the the, uh, the family develops the children get better education so these are very important things which need to be factored in government can't give a jobs to everyone government has to govern but what's happening is the public thinks that government has to provide jobs it's not possible for the government to provide Sorry. jobs So what I'm saying is that government needs to be an enabler to see that healthcare, whether it's the public sector or the private sector, enable the private sector to come up. And as the commander Bali rightly mentioned, that we are not levering the the public-private partnership that can be a huge game changer. And we have to go back to the hinterland. What I'm talking the small towns and small cities, and not concern everything in the metros. We keep talking about the metros. I think so. That's that's the focus that we need to look at. Absolutely. So some areas, some new announcements which can prove to be game changers 
in the times to come. But of course, some areas which require immediate attention if we are to revolutionize our healthcare system and make it more efficient and seamless for the common people. So with that, I'll have to wrap up the discussion. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program today and sharing your thoughts before us and our viewers. It was a pleasure having you on the show today. So that's it from us on this edition of Perspective. Thanks very much to all our viewers as well for their time.